Nice. Where's that second one? Come on. Need number two. I got number two. Into the boat, baby. Yes. Double Reagan, but Lexi Mars spackle trout. If you're a returning viewer, it's great to have you back. Or if this is your first time watching, hey, welcome to the channel. Hi, my name's Captain Devin and I teach people how to fish the inshore waters of Louisiana for speckled trout and redfish. So if that's something you enjoy, then by all means, please consider subscribing to this channel. Now, today I am out here uh, drifting aimlessly inside Lake Bourne because I am getting ready to go on an incredible speckled trout trip. Yes, this is indeed post Ida. And we have already had a nice cool front move across Louisiana's coast, lowering those water temperatures. And today's goal is to catch a limit of speckled trout. So no more chit chat, let's go ahead and get to that first fishing spot. We are here, baby. All right. Man, it's nice out. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, this is how this is gonna work out. This is fall fishing, all right? We don't spend a whole lot of time screwing around with fish because this is the kind of bite where they are there or they are not. There's not much of a finesse bite you're gonna... I'm sure you could find a finesse bite somewhere out here in the marsh, but it's not worth it. Not when you could just keep moving and find the Grand Slam speckled trout kablam. I just made that up. And this is all because this time of year we have white shrimp exiting the marsh to go out to the Gulf of Mexico for their own spawn. At the same time, we have speckled trout returning from their spawn in saltier waters and both those forces collide. Now those white shrimp, they can't really swim all that well, right? So what they're gonna use is the falling tide to get out to where they gotta go. They migrate on the falling tide and do their best to not lose ground on the incoming tide. And if you know that, and if you apply it, you'll catch fish. Now remember I said that we need moving water and what I don't like about this right here is that the water really ain't moving. In fact, while I was drifting in Lake Bourne recording, recording the intro, when I got the boat going again, I looked at my GPS tracks just to see what was going on while I was drifting. And you know what was going on? The wind was the main mover of the boat. So I think the tide's kind of slack right now. And that makes sense because on the Shell Beach tide table, I want to say uh, high tide's like 6 a.m. and then it's supposed to fall most of the day. That's why I wanted to cross Lake Bourne and get away from Shell Beach, get a little further north, because the tide closer towards the Mississippi Sound is going to be moving sooner. These are all things I teach inside Inshore Fishing 101. You can learn it the hard way by coming out here and spending years of, of keeping fishing reports and eventually figure it out, or watch some videos and get some tidbits here and there, or just get it all in one spot at Inshore Fishing 101. That's what it's made for. Okay, let's bounce. Tide just isn't moving. I just don't dig this. Let's go ahead and roll. This is, this is a lot better. There's a little bit of water movement here. There, there's white birds along the shoreline like snow egrets and egrets and all that stuff, but I don't know, man. I would, I would like to see seagulls diving here. <gasps> I just saw a shrimp jump. Okay, jumping shrimp. Fish literally popping right in front of me. Please, let's just do it here. It's been a while, it's been a while. If there's an exception to my rule of like keeping moving, keep moving and all that, it's going to be this where I have jumping shrimp. The water really could be moving more, but I know it's going to move more. So what I need to do is wait it out. So this is a situation where I will spend 
30 minutes just grinding, wishing, wanting, trying. Just got bit. Come on, there we go. What will make me leave is if it's only small speckled trout. Like this guy. Man, he might be 12 inches. And I am keeping fish today. Bam. Oh, dude, he's almost, he's almost 13 inches. Speckled trout number one. Skunks out the boat. There we go. That's a better feeling fish. That's what the heck he came here for. Good eating size Biloxi Marsh speckled trout. Speckled trout number two. So when you're fishing something like this, you want to get back in the water. You don't want to be screwing around with taking pictures. You don't want to be screwing. A, a take it for someone who takes a lot of pictures and video. You don't want to spend. A, don't want to waste a lot of time taking pictures and video. You just want to get back out there because this isn't going to last forever. And I think where people go wrong in inshore fishing is that they just don't move fast enough. They move slow. They, they spend way too much time in the wrong spots that don't have any fish. Come on, buddy. There we go. That's a trout I'm looking for. They spend way too much time in spots that don't produce fish. And when they do get on fish, they dilly-dally around. They want to drink beers. They want to do anything other than actually catching fish. I'm actually going to reposition the boat. I'm going to reposition the boat to try and get a better camera view, I guess you could say. My job is hard. I have to be able to find fish, record them, and position the boat in such a manner so that the sunlight's good, right? When you got sunlight just blasting down on the water in front of the camera, it doesn't look good. Those of you who notice stuff like that and appreciate it and even take the time to mention it, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. See, the birds are showing up now. Yeah, birds, this is one of those rare occasions where I find the shrimp before you do. Shrimp always end up flowing in the same spot, so very, very rarely do they not. Sometimes they do end up flowing in completely different spots. And that's why it's, it's worth checking. And a lot of that's detailed inside uh, the fall fish location course that I have for free for you guys to enjoy and benefit from and come out here and catch a bunch of fish. There we go. Ooh. Boop. Nice Biloxi Marsh eating size speckled trout. Speckled trout number three, number four. You know what, I'm, guys, I still see jumping shrimp. I'm sure y'all do too. Uh, I am going to throw a double rig because why not? Sometimes a good tactic to getting through all the throwbacks is to just cast two at a time. And somewhere in there, you're going to have you're gonna have keepers. Just keep knocking them in the boat. That guy actually might keep. Again, I really just don't want big speckled trout today. I want, I want these delicious speckled trout. Oh yeah. Number five. There we go. All right, there's one fish. Come on. Now I think I have two now. I'm not sure. Yeah, I do. I got two. Whoop. Pretty sure they're both throwbacks, though. Okay, yeah, that's that guy's definitely a throwback. Now I'm gonna mess with him. You, I will measure. Welcome to the club, buddy. Number six. Oh, there's one. Where's that second one at? Need that second one. There's that second one. I think it came off. Throw it back. I am catching keeper fish, so that's what's keeping me coming back. Ooh. 
Look at all those jumping shrimp. Cast that double rig right into the middle of all those jumping shrimp and bam, right away. This is how it should be when you're fall fishing speckle trout. You should cast down and immediately hook up. None of this, like, I think I got a bite or I had a nibble or, oh, my life shrimp was taken again. Uh, none of that. Bam, there we go. I'm pretty sure one of these is a keeper and one is not. This little guy right here, I have my doubts. Oh yeah, here we go. Bam. Another nice keeper. Speckle trout number seven. And when you're fishing that double rig, if you don't get hit right away, just Keep retrieving and lifting up on it, maybe even pop it up, and just in an effort to keep it towards the surface of the water where I believe the speckled trout are really concentrating their efforts. And if you don't catch anything, no big deal, just cast back out. Preferably where you see action on the water. There's one, where's my second one at? Where's my second one? I don't know if I'm gonna get a second one. Boy, I'll measure you 12 and a half. Boom, baby. Number eight. Now, something you will have happen when you're fishing a situation like this is a uh, speckled trout will stop biting, but you'll, or rather, you'll stop catching speckled trout. Sometimes they just come and go in waves. It's just what happens. And what you do is you just sit and wait and be patient and keep casting. There we go. Ooh, where's that second one at? Oh, there's a second one. Oh, that was a classic double rig strike. Oh, I love it. Ooh, one of those, possibly even both could keep. Oh, yeah. Speckled trout number nine. Whew, feels good. Ooh, okay, so that's one keeper. Speckle trout number 10. So let me tell y'all something about live shrimp. So I just cast out. I didn't have to bait the hook or anything. I just had a cast out, that was it. Oh, I, I may or may not catch anything on this cast. Looks like I'm not catching anything. So I'm gonna reel it in. And look, my bait's exactly where it's supposed to be on the hook. It didn't come off, I don't have to check it. I don't have to get a new one. I can just cast back out. If your bait came off, something stole it or whatever, then guess what you're doing right now? You're walking to your little bait bucket or the live well or whatever, and you're putting another bait back on. Meanwhile, I'm hooked up with fish. So you see the difference there? That's, even though it seems like it's a tiny difference, it's really a big one. Now, you know, I didn't catch a state record on this cast. I didn't do anything amazing, even though this might be a keeper. No, not a keeper. So you get my point. While you're messing with live shrimp, I'm getting a cast back out. This is why artificial lures, and I use air quotes because all lures are artificial. Artificial lures are ultimately better. Look, everything that you can use to ever catch a, a fish is just a tool in the toolbox. But I will tell you that some tools are better than others. And the absolute worst thing an initial wrangler can do is refuse to learn something new and not be open-minded about something. Ooh, that felt good. Ooh, yeah. Bam, that's a keeper. While you're spending time putting a fresh shrimp on your hook to cast back out, I'm already casting out because I don't have to mess with a live shrimp in the first place. And now, I'm one speckle trout ahead of you. Remain open-minded, learn new things, you'll catch more fish. Number 11. Ooh, yes. Come on, I need, I need that second one. Where's that second one? I don't think I'm getting a second one. Ooh, I might have a second one. No, I don't. That's a nice keeper, baby. 
Number 12. All right, look, the fishing tips and all that stuff are great, but let's just go ahead and knock out a limit. Oh, that was awesome. Oh yeah. 13. Okay, not a keeper. 14. Hell yeah. 15. Right there at the side of the boat. You can see him right there. Look at him go. Mm, he might keep. Look at the belly on that mama. Welcome to the team, darling. 16. Mm, maybe. Awesome. Number 17. Oh, that feels good. Into the boat. Oh yeah, baby. Number 18. Boom shakalaka. Hell yeah. 19. Hey, number two. I got number two. Into the boat, baby. Yes. Bam, check that out. Sparkle beetles for the win. 20 and 21. Oh, there we go. That's the second one. Into the boat. Nice keeper. Throwback. 22. I got two immediately as soon as it hit the water. Come on, baby. Oh, that's a nice trout. That is a nice speckled trout. 23 and 24. So we're fishing for speckled trout number 25 right now. Come on, come on, come on. Let's get it on. Oh yeah. Another two for. Oh man, I think they're both throwbacks though. All right, so this first fish, there's no way it's 12 inches. Absolutely no way. So back into the water you go. Today's your lucky day, buddy. But this guy, but this guy possibly. And there we go. All right, so I caught a limited speckled trout. And what needs to happen next is that I need to go search for more speckled trout. I mean, look, these are still eating behind me. I can still hear shrimp popping behind me, but it will do me no good to catch any more here because I've already caught 25 and I already know that they're here. So why would I waste time during these excellent fishing conditions when I can go out and maximize this time by finding more fishing spots, just like this one? Where else are trout eating up? Well, that's gonna be in next week's video, so you be sure to subscribe and ring that bell for all notifications so you don't miss it. And if you'd like to learn how it is, I find fishing spots like this one, completely from scratch, 100% on my own, then all you need to do is become a member of LAFBElite.com and I will teach you everything it is that I know. But if you'd like to get a taste of what being a member of LAFB Elite is like, then you can join my free course made specifically for this fishing pattern called Fall Fish Location. Go to lafbelite.com, scroll down a little bit, and you'll see the link for registration. It's 100% free. And last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and tight lines.